The frozen north is an inhospitable and cruel climate, but there is also beauty. Here the majestic jaguar seal flourishes, and researchers like Ricky from all sorts of words have dedicated their lives to their study. Over the last 25 years, you'd think it would be all of the differences, this laundry list of things that I remember that make the jaguar seal and human beings different, but it's the similarities I find most fascinating. Although a human being would find sustenance in things like a cheesed burger, the jaguar seal finds that same sustenance in something like the emperor penguin. And just like us, they need shelter, community, and even love. And the similarities don't just end there. Most researchers know that the jaguar seal needs 13,000 calories a day, roughly, to survive. But what they don't know is they need at least 65 standard-sized comic books every day as well. For the jaguar seal, sustenance of the mind is just as important as sustenance of the body. But getting these comic books into their flippers has proven uniquely challenging. Because of limited infrastructure and the rapidly changing climate, the Jaguar seal finds itself in a peculiar predicament. There's no roads here, no Amazon two-day delivery. Without human innovation and invention, I'm afraid the Jaguar seal would intellectually starve without access to the comic books they so desperately need. Why can't they just go to a comic book store? Because they're f***ing seals. What, what, what are we doing here? However, researchers have leveraged technology to bring comic books to the Jaguar seal through the magic of the internet. Although the technology we're going to be going over today is excellent for getting SEALs comic books for free online, I have to be clear, this is not intended for human use. For Jaguar SEALs, it is imperative that they have access to these books. But for human beings, it's just illegal piracy. <laughs> you wouldn't download a car, would you? Back in the olden days of downloading things online, you would use a service called Peer-to-Peer, -peer, or P2P. This is what things like Napster and BearShare or LimeWire were made out of. And that's why it was so easy to get caught, because all they had to do was find high traffic between two locations. The design and purpose of torrenting is that instead of a single location being downloaded from, you're downloading one file from one million different locations. And then once the file is complete on your desktop, that's when the torrent client assembles the file, creating one piece of work. Now, for the SEALs to use this, first they need to download the client. It's called MicroTorrent, sometimes called uTorrent because of this little symbol. The symbol actually means micro, so if you want to sound really smart to SEALs, that's what you should call it. So the SEAL would give that a simple Google and download the client. Now, once the client has been downloaded, now you need an actual torrent file. For here, I recommend the SEALs to use things like 1337.to for movies and music, or for a more robust, specifically comic collection, something like Pirate Bay, where you can actually search for individual comics. And once the SEALs have comics on their system, they also want to download something like CBR. You can give that a Google search as well. This is called the Comic Book Reader. What it's designed to do is to take multiple disparate images and coalesce them into one scrollable file so that it gives you more of a PDF kind of appearance without the clunkiness of actually using a PDF. Now, even though you're not actually collecting comic books, one of the benefits of torrenting is that you get to keep the files on your computer, so it really does scratch that collector itch. However, if a SEAL is just looking to read comic books online, 
readallcomics.com is an excellent digital alternative so that they can jump in, read what they want, and then jump out without any of the mess and fuss of actually having to potentially do something illegal. I do want to mention, there is a way for human beings to access free comic books as well. A way that not only gets them the books that they want, but also enriches their own community. Your local library. You see, libraries get their funding based off usage. It doesn't matter what you borrow from them, only that you borrow from them. So any participation helps them grow, but also they specifically collect materials for whatever audience is most likely to engage with them. Being that comic book readers are avid readers, they need their help most of all. Even my own small public library back on the mainland, Lewiston, Maine, has a selection this robust. And even if yours doesn't, libraries are on a network that allow them to borrow from other libraries, meaning if you work with staff, they'll happily help you find a physical copy of what you need and having it shipped to your library at no cost to you. Though the Jaguar seal undoubtedly faces challenges by man, it's through technology that man has been able to bring them the comic books they need to survive. But a question does linger. What do the Jaguar seals prefer? Are you asking me if they like Marvel or DC better? I get this question all the time. The Jaguar seal has over 10 times the taste buds of the average human being. This is an important evolutionary feature that allows them to detect great quality food at even greater distances. Their heightened level of taste also make them the most discerning of readers who require the highest quality content. That being said, there's truly only one type of comic book that fills that need. Indie comics, obviously. <laughs> Dear God, they'd be dead within days if all they relied on was Marvel and DC. I think any living creature's brain would die if it attempted such a thing. I've been kissed by a rose on the grave. I've been kissed by a rose on the grave. If I should fall, kissed by a rose on the grave.